Welcome back to Cheche. We're live on Citizen TV. Uh, now, many of us are confused about the unprecedented times we find ourselves in. We don't know whether there will be a repeat presidential poll following the withdrawal of Nasser's flag bearer, Raila Odinga, and his running mate from the process. Different lawyers are quoting different laws, different articles of the Constitution. But beyond the legalities, is the politics of the situation, the coverage of the situation, working for us? Today's guests are political scientist Dr. Wanjiru Kamal Rutenberg. Uh, all her degrees are in political science. She's taught political science. And Dr. Nancy Booker, senior lecturer in communication at the Aga Khan University. We also have with us lawyer turned politician, although he says he's not a politician, Charles Nyachai, formerly of the Constitution Implementation uh, Commission. So look, um, I think the, the thing that we all would like to know as Kenyans is, will there be a presidential election on October 26th? You're the lawyer, you're the one you know, who's uh, charged with um, overseeing the implementation of the Constitution. Will we have an election? My reading of the Constitution um, is yes, we will have an election for the following reasons. Uh, first of all, I think uh, many Kenyans may not, may not be aware, but a lot of people will be, that the part of the Supreme Court's uh, ruling on the, was it the 1st of September, the, 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 the part that talked about uh, a repeat, a fresh election within 60 days, uh, w was actually in, uh, is, it wasn't so much uh, the Supreme Court's order it's straight out of the Constitution Article uh, 140 sub Article 3 that once the Supreme Court had made that decision that uh, they have declared the, the, the results of the, of the uh, then just concluded the uh, elections uh, null and void then that was the constitutional consequence to how that election uh, uh, within 60 days now my reading of the constitution uh, that is uh, a mandatory uh, requirement within the constitution the argument that is being used to suggest that we may not have an election um, uh, comments that were made by the Supreme Court in, in what lawyers are now calling Raila 2013, the, 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 the 2013 uh, mm -hmm. uh, petition, uh, in which uh, the Supreme Court, uh, in, 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 in what uh, lawyers call uh, obiter dictum, in other words, it, it, it was a statement almost as a by the way, because it was not part of the ruling, the, 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 the ruling or, or the decision, they said if they had ordered a fresh election then they went on to say that which they did order they went on to say that in that scenario fresh election uh, and this was pursuant to what something the attorney general had asked as amicus curia when he was he was, he was uh, making uh, his uh, presentation to the to the court they they, they then uh, made this uh, uh, comment obiter dicta that uh, if they had ordered a fresh election, then fresh election would have meant, first of all, the two candidates who uh, uh, participated in the proceedings, namely the, the petitioner and uh, the, 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 the winning presidential candidate respondent. Uh, that aspect is what we expect uh, a ruling from the High Court this morning, uh, today. Uh, uh, that is uh, that, that that aspect whether uh, you know that is really what the, the the correct constitutional position is. They then went on to say that if in the event that and the wording here is very important abandoned abandoned. abandoned. Now this word abandoned is a strange word because it doesn't appear anywhere in the in constitution. constitution. So we have to ask ourselves what 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 abandoned meant. But that's what they said that if if one of the parties uh, uh, ab uh, abandons uh, their, their presidential quest, their, their presidential quest, uh, then you would go back to Article 138 and the, and the whole process of um, uh, of uh, nominations and so on. So to answer your question, from where I stand, why I, I, I my reading of the constitution is that we must have an election is first of all. The Constitution in Article 140 sub Article 3 requires it in very clear terms. Secondly, the, 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 the reference uh, in, in the Supreme Court uh, Raila 2013 uh, ruling was made uh, obita. So from, from where I sit, it's not law. Uh, and Why is it not law? It's not law because um, 
the, 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 the sources of law that we have in our system. Because really that is what NASA is hung on. Actually the question would be, yeah, that, that would the Supreme thing. Court yeah. of the land mm. make a by the way statement yes, while so interpreting the Constitution? The courts mm. do not that all the time. Courts make, that is precisely why we have that uh, phrase, obita dicta. Courts make that all the time. Because Which means? Let oh. me, <laughs> no, why don't you spell it? Mm. Because I'm sure our viewers will mm. be googling it as okay. they're watching yes, this. Yes, that would be very good. Yeah. <laughs> o -B -I -T -E, it's actually a Latin phrase. Yes. O B I T E R D I. That's the first word. The second one is B I C T A. Oh, now, l l let me try. Let me try and answer you. If the court was actually giving a constitutional interpretation, notwithstanding that. It's, it, you know, the, 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 the court that has uh, um, jurisdiction to the constitution is the High Court. The Supreme Court can give uh, an advisory opinion which, according to itself, is binding, which is fine. But that advisory opinion was not, uh, uh, advisory uh, opinion jurisdiction was not uh, uh, invoked. But the whole point about the, 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 the answer to the question of uh, why it's not uh, 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 law is there are three sources of law the constitution uh, the laws that are passed by parliament acts of parliament yes mm -hmm. and and the decisions yeah of the courts in, in, in the various uh, now this was not a decision the decision you see there was a dispute in 2013 between parties and the court made a decision same as there was a decision in 2017 between parties and the court made a decision. Yeah? Uh, that, that it was not part of that decision. Yeah? Because it was not, that, that was not an issue that was uh, mm. uh, in dispute. It is not an issue that was uh, canvassed. It is uh, uh, something that the uh, Attorney General asked uh, the court and in... in, in uh, to, give, to give direction. But, you see, it cannot have been giving directions, uh, <laughs> Charles. Oh, okay. Sorry, I've looked it up. Yeah. Words of an opinion entirely unnecessary for the decision of the case. A remark made or opinion expressed by a judge in a decision upon a cause, by the way, that is incidentally or collaterally, and not directly upon the question before the court, or upon a point not necessarily <laughs> involved in the determination of the cause, or introduced by way of illustration or analogy or argument such are not binding as precedent. Precisely my point. Precisely Which means what now? That NASA is, the, the, the NASA lawyers are, uh, are crazy? Have attached or? themselves you to... Know, you know, know. What, what, what does that mean? No, no, no. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't mean that. What, what, what it means, in my opinion, is that, uh, and I have a lot of uh, regard for uh, several of the lawyers uh, uh, acting for NASA, but you see, uh, nobody has uh, a monopoly about uh, the law, you know, understanding or interpretation of the law. So it, it, it doesn't, it, it, I, in my view, uh, these words were spoken obita dicta, and, and uh, uh, Udwak has just read what that, the effect of that is. But I wouldn't want to say that the, the NASA lawyers are... I think they're wrong if, they, if they're trying to use that. That's what they That's not entirely yeah. what is legend that... Okay, you, you've been asking then this question, he's wrong. answered it, yes. let's move on. Uh, and the question then becomes, given the NASA pullout, yes. um, is there a point to having an election? You say one could should take place, given your reading of the Constitution, is there any point? Why not just declare um, Uhuru Kenyatta um, the president? Why well, would we want um, to waste our 12, 12 billion? You see, yes, you see when we're yeah. talking about an election, uh, and there are other such instances in the constitution, even if IEBC, uh, within its rights, were, were to determine that now the, the, there being only one uh, candidate, uh, then we are going to declare that candidate uh, to be uh, elected, that would be part of the process of this election of 26. That, that, that's just how the, the process would carry out. But the election as a, as a, a, a constitutional process is what I'm saying, mm -hmm. must mm -hmm. proceed. Now how... So how what you're saying yeah. is we don't necessarily have to go and vote on the 26th. Um, the IBC is within its rights to say, there being only one candidate, we declare him the victor. Subject to what the High Court says today in the... Mm -hmm. 
Okay. In the in the in the equivalent court case. I think what's important is to follow process. So mm. and and here I do not claim to be a lawyer. Right, so I don't know what the, the, the legal interpretation is. But if the legal interpretation is there needs to be an election, then spend the money now and actually set precedent of following processes as laid out by the law. The act of doing it is going to be important for generations in the future. And I was coming to that, what's best for the country? Mm -hmm. um, is it declaring President Kenyatta the victor unopposed? Is it, you know, the process? I mean, no more no gentlemen's agreements. Happened? Gentlemen's agreements were good for when we were in, we were in the opening phase. You know, the, the, um, <coughs> there was time for that. Now is the time to build institutions. And building institutions means following the law. It means following the processes. Even if it feels like a waste of money, it feels like a waste of time, follow the process. And we're not doing it for ourselves. We're doing, doing it for our children's children's children. And so the question is, how costly would the democratization process be, especially the phase we are in, the transitional how phase? How costly because is it to not do it? Good question. Because as we are now, assuming, and I like what uh, Mr. Nyachai keeps saying, in my opinion, in his opinion, assuming the institutions uh, share his opinion and uh, uh, President Uru Kenyatta is declared as duly elected, half or almost half of the country will see him as illegitimate see him as illegitimate. And so my question is, how costly would the transitional phase of the democratization process be? But what's, the, what's the alternative to that? Because if you don't follow the process, then the other half, the other half of or whatever percentage it is, mm -hmm. will, 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 will uh, similarly feel that not, not, not only have they, have they, uh, will they feel that that result is illegitimate, they will even begin to wonder why do we have these uh, uh, institutions, why do we have this process? Mm -hmm. So does our political system work for us? We live in it. I mean, what, what, what does, does that work for us? And so woodwork, we are clearly... We need to, no, hold on. We, we need to argue that point it. out. It's, I think that this, on the whole, yes it does. Why? At any given time, 49 to 51% of the population are giddy happy and 49% to 51% of the population are despondent. So I guess we're splitting it half the middle. I mean, which is a silly way to run a country, really. For me, when it comes to the argument, oh, it's too expensive to do it. It's too expensive not to do it. Yeah. Look at our neighbors, look across this continent, and that is agree, it's too expensive to do this, to not do it properly. So, and I think to an extent that's what the court said. Mm -hmm. and, and, I think, and I think not, yes. not just reducing it. We are not in a <laughs> We are not in a legal crisis, but we are in a moral and ethical crisis. Okay. Yeah. But, but, we but, are at a crossroad. But, but where we you are doomed if you do it, mm. you are doomed if you don't. Okay. Isn't where we want to be, uh, and I think I accept Dr. Anjiro's uh, uh, argument that this is part of the process. Isn't where we want to be a scenario where notwithstanding w what 49 or 51 percent of the country thinks, but they accept yeah. uh, the, the, the position abide. as part of the process and abide. And I'll give you an example. Yeah. Millions of Americans and, and, ma and, and many non-Americans, <laughs> myself included, <coughs> They feel that the Supreme Court uh, of uh, the Supreme Court of the U.S. the decision they made in the Al Gore case was wrong. Many people, many Americans feel that. But if they said, you know what? That's that's we must live with the with with mm -hmm. our institutions and, and and their decisions, and life continues. And isn't that where we want to be? <laughs> mm -hmm. And then and uh, and I think it's a great case to 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 look at because then you what you've then seen is that enhanced political focus or enhanced focus by the politician small p on that institution nominations into the supreme court in the u.s are highly political yes. affairs right so uh, let's not be naive to assume that we will separate the politicians from the the judges we're all in this yes. milieu together and that's where that balance of powers 
in the constitution then really comes in but at the end of the day the only thing we have to hang on to is the referees so let's make sure the referees have the autonomy the independence and the power but it's that's a part of where we is. find okay. that's what the problem is we don't trust the referee and uh, we that point the, is addressed the, 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 the referees the, the, have to exactly. earn trust the, the executive the jubilee government as of now seems to be going ahead to muzzle the institutions if you see what they have done for for instance with the uh, NGOs what they have done some things they do with the media they, they, they seem to be going backwards but, uh, but uh, that's why but but the, the beauty is the beauty is those same NGOs are able to go to court and get uh, really, uh, you know uh, judicial but the court release. orders are not honored why is Fazul Muhammad still in office? Yeah. Why is he sending letters to people? Well, I don't think there's a, a court which has said he should go out of office. They, they, but they but when, when he this. said, when he, where, where the courts have said, you know, you know, re, re, reinstate their registration, where they have said, uh, you know, leave their bank accounts alone, that, that, that uh, those orders have been uh, complied with. To me, and I go back to where we started, that's what I want to focus on, that, that uh, uh, gradually, gradually, our institutions are working. I think there's an import, uh, interesting point coming up about the r respecting, I, I think we didn't, let, let's hash that one out a bit, respecting court orders, respecting uh, the decisions fully, the decisions of, of courts. Or even parliament. The parliament passes a law, it is, it is, it is um, resistant, assented, but implementation, zero. We need to have, we need to work on that. Yeah. Part of the, the, the problem with regard to, uh, you know, just that memory, uh, even among the public, that as we chase the next big story as media, that we forget to remind people, you know, this is what the last big story. Mm. This is, you know, uh, what happened when court orders were not respected. These are the cases that we could actually allude mm -hmm. to, and this is what is likely, uh, you know, to happen. Mm -hmm. So, with that missing, you know, with that history, with that context missing, mm -hmm. then the public really doesn't have uh, a base on which to mm -hmm. make informed decisions, and the result of that, we have seen lots of propaganda, lots of speculation, a lot of fake news, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in that space because people are actually yearning for that information that would help them make those informed decisions and that doesn't seem And that's reflected in our viewer, um, in our viewer comments. The media through relevant bodies should address what the constitution says on the situation Kenya is in today. Kenya is tired of people who are pro NASA or Jubilee. We need a legal way forward. Dear all, my take is that the idea of Kenya as a nation state is and has always been a lie. If nothing happens, this lie will continue into eternity. Um, uh, ask Bonanya Chai please for us whether the constitution is for lawyers or Kenyans considering the language used therein, the Fanaya in Nairobi. Um, this is the crystal truth. Media have failed Kenyans. For instance, malaria has claimed 53 people. Mm. Messes are going into the fourth month of their strike. 90% of our mothers are delivering at home. But all media houses are about uh, Uhuru, Raila politics, day in, day out. It's all very unfortunate. It will reach a time when the public sun is threatening us. We'll start attacking journalists <laughs> for failing to address what adds value to their lives. And um, that's Ben in Migori. Um, why does it appear that, and we, we've addressed this, that lawyers in are interpreting the laws very differently from each other, like our laws are very difficult? And, and then this on the IBC, it's the institution that should have instilled trust. It failed dismally during the August 8th elections. Mm. IBC failed again to instill trust after a historic Supreme Court judgment. Now, I believe after yesterday's after yesterday's announcement, uh, the, the NASA pullout, yeah. I, IBC has probably the last opportunity to gain the trust of people by making the reform so that it can be, be just or appear to be just. So that's where um, our viewers are feeling um, the, the mistrust quite um, uh, heavily. But um, Manju, you made a point earlier about the professional class. And the question I want to ask you about that isn't that our, hasn't professionalism in Kenya been subverted? to partisan and political leaning? No, not, I, don't, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that here, more than 
other places I travel to on the continent, you do actually see a professional class that is committed to being professional. And, and, and much as we've spent a lot of time being critical, let's also give, give, give just dues. We do have a civil service that tries. It does. You need an ID. Tunajaribu. This is a process. Right? Like, is, is it perfect? No. There are places where these things don't happen. Right? So, I think the bigger point I want to make is around civil society and public service and professionalism. I think for a really long time we've been used to thinking about a civil society that we needed for the first two phases of this transition. And which was seen as aligned to opposition interests. Yes. Anti-status uh, anti quo, anti-state. And we really need to break out of that mold and start thinking differently and start seeing professional organizations, the nurses, the doctors. When the doctors went on strike, they didn't just say we want salaries. They were telling us really important things about our whole healthcare system. They were telling us really important things about how we devolved health care and uh, health provision and what will work and will not work for us. They, they were playing a really important civil society role. So we need to start... And, nurses, and, and we branded them. And nurses are telling us something. Not just about their so salaries. Babies are not being immunized, leprosy outbreak. We have leprosy outbreak. in Kuala. I mean, these professionals are telling something about uh, telling us something about ourselves, and so and the, the the shape and the face of civil society needs to change, is changing, and media needs to adjust to that. We as a public need to adjust to what civil society looks like, right? We are calling it civil society. Some people think it's evil society, but that's not, <laughs> that not understanding. I don't think myself that uh, professional organizations have played a, a critical role they, they used to, to play before. When you say if critical, you, do you mean constructive? Constructive yeah. and, 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 and engaging and professional being not being partisan. It, for instance, when we were fighting Moi, the whole society was one strong, very body, except two or three lawyers who were ascended. <laughs> the, the majority of them knew the way when we were fighting for multipartisan. Today, the law, the law society is divided. It's like if, you look, if you look at East Park, for instance, East Park, what, what, what do they do about what I've heard them saying about our, our tax visit, our borrowing? They, they have said nothing. If anything, mm -hmm. for instance, when the the you are know, being fought, have I had, had any defense from the professionals, the accountants, mm -hmm. the auditor? Mm -hmm. Zero. When, so journalists, no when journalists were attacked in Kisumu by the GSU the yeah. other day on Monday, the professional body, I mean the media, the editors, yeah, yeah. Deals, and media yeah. owners, yeah. Kenya Union of Journalists, all quiet. Can I flip that? Yeah. Okay. What is media's role in actually bringing those voices to the fore? Because if you have a news show that only has, and again, it's a bit rude, but the, the loud mouths of us, and you don't have, and you don't create space, for, professional. for the professionals to also I, say I this is our perspective if, and here's the thing about the professionals if, if, if it's a mug, mud fight we're not pigs, we're not in it, right? Like they're not going to go into a, a, a slinging fight. So can we actually curate conversations that are not who can yell loudest but that allow reason mm. to percolate Okay, um, I'll allow you to respond. Let me, let me allow you to respond after the break. Okay. Right. Uh, this is Cheche. We're live on Citizen TV. Please send your questions and opinions on how you think the NASA pullout from the repeat election affects our democracy. Uh, SMS us on 22422 or tweet us uh, using the hashtag Cheche.